Hi everyone, I'm Thomas Burkhardt with NASA Spaceflight and welcome to this week's Starship Update. As always, big thanks to Mary, who you can find at Boca Chica Gal on Twitter. She's Boca Chica resident and NSF team member who tirelessly documents Starship development every single day. All of the following photos and videos are from her unless otherwise noted. Thank you, Mary. This week, the big news was Starship SN8's final static fire test, which was completed on Tuesday. This static fire was shorter compared to the others, but was more notable for a different reason. It looked and sounded like a staggered startup, probably to be as nice as possible to the already damaged and patched pad. It will be interesting to see how the pad fares a full engine startup during flight. Hopefully SN8 is able to get into the air without chunks of the pad doing any damage to the vehicle. This 3 engine static fire was the last major test before SN8's 15 km altitude flight. Elon Musk confirmed that the test was successful and that Starship is go for launch next week. Road closures for the flight begin on November 30th, but we understand that the flight is now targeted for later next week. Winds are forecasted to be high early in the week, which could be a factor, and we are also waiting for the airspace restrictions to be filed for this launch. As of November 28th, Starship SN8 has been on Pad A for 63 days, longer than either SN5 or SN6. SN5 spent 42 days on the pad between rollout and flight, and SN6 cut this time down to 24 days. But this makes sense, as SN8's test campaign was longer and more rigorous than previous vehicles, including several static fire tests. SN8 is also, of course, breaking new ground in Starship development, since it features the nose cone and associated header tank, aerodynamic control services, and three Raptor engines. SpaceX will surely want to continue improving in this regard, and luckily Starship SN9 looks ready to roll to the launch site as soon as SN8 flies. On Monday, SN9's nose cone was moved into the high bay, and on Wednesday, the nose cone was lifted and stacked. The fully assembled Starship SN9 vehicle will probably attempt the same 15km flight as SN8, either for repetition like SN5 and SN6 did, or for another try should SN8 find itself in the Gulf of Mexico. Unlike SN8, which was rolled to the pad in two sections and stacked on pad A, SN9 will roll out from the production site fully assembled. It will surely be an impressive sight when a full-size Starship rolls out for flight. Of course, SN9 will need its own set of Raptors for its flight, and on Sunday, the Raptor van delivered engine SN44. SpaceX is likely building up multiple sets of engines for upcoming test vehicles, including SN9 and other Starships, as well as the first Super Heavy booster. Two Merlin engines without hex cans or gas generators also came along for the ride, but they were not unloaded. They were probably headed to SpaceX's McGregor, Texas testing facility with a different Raptor engine which was loaded onto the truck. It was likely Raptor SN32 heading for repairs. As for Starship's SN10 and beyond, SN15's common dome was sleeved and then flipped, and the SN13 methane header tank was spotted. Multiple new nose cones are also in production. This production cadence shows no signs of slowing down, with fresh deliveries of Starship hardware arriving each day. Most notably, another new thrust puck and downcomers arrived, which incorporate design changes for post SN12 starships. And that's it for this week. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support. If you want to see more spaceflight coverage, feel free to subscribe. And if you'd like to support what we do, we have a merch store with t-shirts and other cool NSF gear. And there's also the YouTube membership program with perks like a members only Discord server with the NSF team and access to early preview videos. And as always, tell us what you think of these videos in the comments. With your help, we're able to continue improving all of our content. And finally, thanks again to Mary for her incredible work documenting the historical development of Starship. Until next week, go SpaceX and go Starship SN8.